You got some bad people in those groups. You got some tough people in those groups. And I'll tell you what, this country doesn't want them. The caravan is an epic story of human migration. And it's a phenomenon that stirs different reactions in different people. They are being portrayed as criminals, which they are not. They are within their rights to come here and seek asylum. For me, the caravan raises a question related to a recent trip I made to Central America, to an area called the Dry Corridor, where I witnessed the impacts of a severe drought that's linked to climate change and has devastated agriculture. This year, in just one dry corridor country, Honduras, 80% of the corn and bean crops were lost. The dry corridor of Central America is particularly vulnerable to this issue of climate change and its impact on food security. The food insecurity is so dire that two million people are now facing hunger. I also learned that the drought has been made worse by El Nino, the warm water off the coast south of Central America. We're currently in an El Nino year, and the future looks even scarier. Scientists believe El Niños are becoming more frequent with a changing climate. Experts say what's known as the dry corridor in Guatemala has grown 25 to 30 percent in the last decade. So now, my caravan question is, have some of these migrants left their homes because of climate change, drought, and hunger? This caravan idea first sparked in October in Honduras, in the city of San Pedro Sula. People from all over the country rushed to join after hearing on TV, radio, Facebook, and WhatsApp that they would no longer have to rely on smugglers. A caravan was being organized, a relatively safe and virtually free way to get to the United States. I'm catching up with the caravan once they've already been on the road for a month, traveled almost a thousand miles, and are arriving in Mexico City. I find a lot of people who worked on farms and say that they fled because of the drought. Mira, la cosa, uh, hubo mucha sequía. Hubo mucha sequía, las milpas. La, la es Among the farm workers who joined the caravan in Honduras was Pedro Castillo. Perdón, pero con respeto le voy a preguntar eso. Me parece que, que es una vida de un pobre. Así es. La verdadera realidad de los hondureños estamos asumidos a la pobreza y no porque y no porque seamos araganes. A veces, eh, bueno, digamos que con la madre naturaleza no se puede hacer nada. Cuando viene la sequía no puedes hacer nada. Perhaps the one thing you can do is flee. That's what Fabiola Diaz and Carlos Salinas are doing. They and their kids are traveling together, even though they didn't know each other before. They're not a couple, but they seem like a family. Fabiola and her two-year-old son, Yeltsin, come from a Honduran town called Santa Barbara. ¿Qué son los tipos de trabajo que hacen? This is not an invasion. This is a drop in the bucket of what comes to the border every month, every week. Atenas Barola is an attorney from North Carolina who's part of a group that's come to Mexico to advise the migrants on U.S. asylum law. I'm following the story of a young woman who is fleeing because of poverty and hunger. Mm -hmm. She's living on a meal a day. 
Does she qualify for asylum if that's the only reason that she's fleeing? If that is the only reason that she's fleeing, unfortunately in the United States she is not going to qualify for asylum. Is she not fleeing for her life? Is she not possibly in danger of her life if she doesn't get food? She probably is, but the way that the U.S. asylum law is written is that it is for people who are fleeing persecution, not economic insecurity. Even with American asylum a virtual impossibility for climate migrants like Fabiola and Carlos, they are nonetheless pushing forward on their journey to the United States. And to help them on their way, the Mexico City authorities are shutting down the subway system early on a Saturday morning and giving it over to the caravan so it can traverse the city and continue its trek northward. When Carlos joined the caravan, he decided to leave his wife and two kids at home and bring his 11-year-old daughter, Angie. La, la Fabiola y Yeltsin son amigos? Sí. ¿Y qué piensas de ellos? Pues que ella, como trae, como trae su niño, se cansa con el coche, trae bastantes cosas. No hay nadie que la ayude por vez. ¿Estás ayudándola? Sí. Tú lo que en la escuela. Eso era difícil. Fue difícil, pero uno a veces por, por tomar una decisión y, y, por, y por tal vez por, por salir adelante. Tomé la decisión, la saqué de la escuela y, y, y me vine. No sé. Ya estamos aquí ya y, y vamos a ver si, si cruzamos al otro lado. To cross over, they still need to reach the U.S. border. And for the last thousand miles of their journey, they walk, they hitchhike in mass. And some amazingly catch buses chartered by Mexican states to take them all the way to the border city of Tijuana. Despierta, Mexico, despierta. This is how Tijuana greets the caravan. It's a far cry from the warm Mexico City welcome. And while the total number of caravan migrants may not be overwhelming, the city's anti-caravan mayor nonetheless calls the influx an avalanche and a tsunami. Buenos días, Fabiola. Habla Juan Carlos Frey, periodista de Estados Unidos. ¿Cómo estás? I left the caravan for a few days, and now I'm heading back, trying to reconnect with Fabiola and Carlos. I hear that Tijuana is housing the caravan in a community sports center that sits literally on the border with the United States. So I head there to find them. And here she is. <laughs> If they just cross the wall, they are so close to their American dream, but have no idea how to finally reach it. The United States will not be a migrant camp, and it will not be a refugee holding facility. Won't be. In fact, crossing over seems more impossible than ever. We're facing a man-made disaster of global scale. But if you ask the climate migrants who lived through the severe drought and the hunger that followed, they'll say that joining the caravan was something they simply had to do. Yo siempre he pasado la pobreza, pero jamás he querido abandonar mi tierra porque tienes tus hijos, tus papás, tienes tu familia. No, yo creo que no hay un lugar donde te sientas más cómodo que en tu tierra. Pero igual cuando ya sientes el hambre, que el hambre ya te, te trae encima, que tal vez tus hijos te están exigiendo, papá, quiero comer de tal cosa, quiero comer comida buena, quiero comer carne. Entonces, es ahí donde te llenas de coraje y dices, me voy. <laughs> 